I'm Davey, and I'm awesome, and welcome to Davey's Awesome Movies, where I review the styles of movies that I love, the alternative B-rated cult style flicks. This week we're going to be wrapping up the series of movies created by William Lustig. This one was made in 1993, and of course was directed by William Lustig, and like the other two, written by Larry Cohen, produced and partially directed by Joel Soison, and also produced by Michael Leahy. Made by First Look Studios and Neo Motion Pictures. And distributed by HBO Academy Home Entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, the final installment to the Maniac Cop series. Maniac Cop. Three, Badge of Silence. The movie opens with some scrolling text telling us what happened in the last movie. See? This is the scrolling text. It's scrolling and telling you things. Isn't it great? Then we have flashes of Cordell's funeral, you know, the... Maniac Cop. From the last two movies. And at the same time, some guy speaking and doing voodoo. Omni. I survey. What's with the head? I... But... Okay. Then we see the lead in this movie, Detective Sean McKinney, played by Robert Dobby. I love the sound of gunfire. <laughs> who, yes, was also the lead in Maniac Cop. Two. Then, Detective Sean McKinney gets called away to a crime scene where they found a body that belonged to the head that we saw during the voodoo thing. And it's got a chicken stuffed in it. Ew. Well. Other than losing his head, looks like he had a nice day. At least he died with a smile on his face. <laughs> Too soon? Then we go out to a couple of cops who are at a pharmacy. <laughs> the shooter is a man named Frank Jessup. <laughs> played by Jackie Earl Haley. Now an officer, Kate Sullivan, heads in. I, I don't think that gun is police issue. Just saying, maybe if you would have held that gun properly, you might have hit him. Well, since he's okay... Go ahead, I dare you! You wanna see your brains? Huh? So what does she do? Get out of my way! What the hell is wrong with you, you stupid... She leaves, with a couple of news guys just there filming. She actually heads up to the roof. Drop the gun! Well, that was pointless. You can't hurt me, because I'm immortal. Not yet, but eventually he'll get set on fire and then he'll come back for your children in their dreams. That was a horrible remake. So finally... You shot him! For some reason, the hostage is not happy about her shooting him. Bust him in! What a twist! I'm buying a new foreign car. At this point, would those two be considered an accessory? Over to the... Maniac Cop. He meets up with Haugen, the voodoo guy. And your spirit will never be at rest. Not as long as Joe Marshall's alive. We, we don't, don't care, care if you get it. Cordell hears the news over the radio, though, that Kate Sullivan is actually being blamed for the death of that hostage saying that if she doesn't die from her wounds, she may face charges. Because they're saying that she shot her in cold blood. It was unnecessary. The news even gives her the name... Maniac. Kate. He has a right to be mad. That's his nickname. Cordell goes to the hospital that Kate is at. Asked me if she had it coming. About time you guys figured out this ain't the Wild West, pal. And he decides to do a little bit of skeet shooting. <laughs> what you say that was cool mckinney meets up with a da willie who is telling him that the shooter frank jessup is actually alive and suing the city for millions because not only was the gun that officer sullivan had illegal but the bullets in her actual revolver were hollow points which was also illegal the da is going to offer him a commuted sentence if he drops the suit 
As far as Kate, who's in a coma, is concerned... Just pray your friend doesn't wake up. Our justice system for you. So McKinney goes to the hospital and pays Frank a visit. Maybe there's something else you forgot to tell the other detectives, okay? Fine, thank you. Until Frank's doctor, a Dr. Fowler, shows up. It's terrible when you have an itch you can't scratch. Yeah, it is. Ugh. Well, Kate is in her coma. She starts dreaming about getting married. You know, like all women do. Maybe not. This causes her to wake up for a moment, startling McKinney, who was there with her. He reports it to the first doctor he sees, which just happens to be Dr. Fowler, and she reports it to Kate's doctor, a Dr. Meyerson, who's completely unfazed by it. Please, Susan, don't push me on this. Y you know how I react when, I, when you push me. Dr. Meyerson is played by Doug Savant, most known for his roles in Melrose Place and Desperate Housewives. In this, he's a jerk. Beat me. I'm on vibrate. Later, while Dr. Meyerson is in the doctor's lounge getting inappropriate with a nurse, someone knocks on the door. <laughs> it's Cordell. So Dr. Meyerson runs off and runs up to the roof. Good idea, but being up there doesn't work out for him. <laughs> He's shocked. When McKinney shows up at the crime scene, Dr. Fowler asks him, how do you deal with this stuff? Chocolate, chocolate, milk ice cream. Personally, I prefer peanut butter and chocolate. McKinney asks, who would have had a motive to do this? Practically everyone who works at this hospital. Like I said, he was a jerk. Dr. Fowler does tell McKinney, though, that she did see a very large cop go down into the tunnels underneath the hospital. Why there are tunnels underneath the hospital? So McKinney goes to check it out and ends up in a voodoo lair. I've been expecting you, McKinney. Well, I just peed. McKinney, though, very quickly realizes what's been done here. Where is he? You'll find him. Or he'll find you. Someone from the DA's office comes over to talk to the chief of staff, Dr. Powell, played by Robert Forrester, with a letter from the next of kin telling them to take Kate off of life support. As Dr. Powell goes to fill out this order, Cordell intervenes. He straps into the x-ray table, turns it on, and just leaves. No harm, right? Oh my god. Except for that. Then we go back to those two news guys that filmed the whole incident earlier, and they're talking about how they edited it to make it look like Kate was the one that was actually in the wrong. As they're talking about this, they're heading to a new crime scene. Well, that's one! <laughs> what? They were scum, I don't care. And Cordell has a present for McKinney. Yes, it's the unedited tape. Now Cordell is gonna go pay Frank a visit. He also uncuffs him. Then we go to Frank's lawyer and the DA, and they're coming to an agreement. Uh, do, do you realize what you just did? Great, I shot my lawyer. Well, as long as you know. But wait, where's Cordell? I thought you were trying to save her. Taking her off life support's not going to do that. Frank and his goons see something. It's McKinney, and he goes looking for Frank. He found him. McKinney and Dr. Fowler learn of Kate's disappearance, and McKinney has a really good idea where she's going to be. What we do here is good. He's planning to resurrect Kate, so he can marry her to Cordell. It's one way to go about it. I usually just ask girls out for a coffee myself. He wants... Maniac. Kate. To marry the... Maniac cop. So they can be a... Maniac. Couple. That's really fun. 
But McKinney is trying to reason with Cordell. You have cleared her name. She's at peace. Let her go. Finish it. That's the only time he speaks in this movie. So the voodoo priest goes about finishing it. But there is a problem. I cannot recover this soul. Apparently because she is at peace, she doesn't want to come back. A soul can't resurrect if it doesn't want to. Okay, dude, if there's anything that these three movies have shown us, it's that you really need to learn how to handle disappointment. So now... <laughs> apparently, he needs to walk around on fire again. McKinney gets Dr. Fowler, and him and her get out of there just as... <laughs> Cordell farts. Rest in peace, Kitty. McKinney and Dr. Fowler ride off in an ambulance to live happily ever after. <laughs> Never mind. So now McKinney has to drive. I hate this! And she becomes a backseat driver. But McKinney has a plan. Take the wheel. Oh, she'll love that. McKinney has the idea of grabbing an oxygen tank from the back of the ambulance and throwing it into Gordell's car since he's on fire and the car is on fire. Which is a good plan, but now I gotta shake Cordell. Get out of here! Question here, is it illegal to drive while being on fire? One second, one second. Ah, yeah. Turns out it is, but only in Alabama. They finally get him off the car. And finally... Has nobody ever told you that smoking will kill you? Well, that's it for Cordell. After three movies, ton of explosions, bullets, crashes, and even being set on fire and walking around on fire twice, he is finally dead and at peace. Oh, for crying! So there you have it, that's... Maniac Cop. Three, Badge of Silence. This movie came out surprisingly well considering all the drama into making this movie. There's no real box office to speak of as this movie didn't go to theaters, it was released straight to HBO. However, again, getting this movie made seriously proved to be a big challenge. This movie is 84 minutes long, but William Lustig's original cut was only 51 minutes, which is why the producer, Joel Soison, came in there and directed the rest of it to be filler. Because by the time that William Lustig had gotten his original cut done, he was so frustrated that when they told him, hey, you need to come back and film some filler, he said, no, I'm done, and he walked off set. Which is why, even though it's uncredited, there is technically two directors. The biggest problem in them making this movie was that Detective McKinney was not in the original script. The original script called for a black lead detective. However, while they were in pre-production, about to get started, a Japanese company that was going to be distributing this movie decided they didn't want it that way. They wanted them to bring back Robert Dobby and have him be the lead in this movie as well. William Lustig fought and fought and fought against this, but ultimately lost and had to recast Robert Dobby. I think the biggest reason they wanted Robert Dobby is because at the time he was somewhat known. I would never say he was a big star, but you gotta remember that they made these movies after Die Hard, which instantly made him that actor that everybody goes, hey, he's that guy from that one movie. But he was somewhat known, so again, they wanted him in the lead. The problem with this, though, was that with making him now the lead in this movie, a lot of the script didn't make any sense. And they wanted Larry Cohen to come back and rewrite the script. However, they were not willing to pay him for the extra work, so he refused. Understandably. So because of this, William Lustig just had to do the best he could with the script that he had. Which meant he had to cut a lot of the scenes in the script because with Robert Dobby being in the lead role, it didn't make any sense now. Which makes me feel bad for William Lustig a little bit, because the first two movies were like his baby, and then the third one, he couldn't get it made the way he wanted, so it kind of happens, people get to a point they're like, you know what, forget it. I'll just make it, get my check, and leave. And hopefully go on to make something that I actually want to make. It's kind of a sad reality of corporate movie world. However, like I said, despite the ridiculous amount of filler in this movie, it actually came out pretty well. I would not say it's better than either of the first two movies. Definitely wouldn't. 
and I would say it probably could have done without this third one, but it's worth watching. It's pretty good. It's not horrible. And I would say that if you are a fan of the first two Maniac Cop movies, then you should, in fact, check out Maniac Cop 3, Badge of Silence. So there you have it. That's my movie review this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notifications when I post my videos, and leave a comment. Tell me what you thought of the Maniac Cop series. Love you guys. Thank you.